quickly was a group of scruffy hippies um, from the universities of England suddenly turned up. They were the ones with the time, they were the ones with the passion, and they could actually be there every day as was needed to make the protest work. I was at a Hawkwin gig in Brixton, an all-nighter, and uh, I started chatting to the chap dancing next to me, and, and he said, oh, I've just come back from this place just outside Winchester. They're trying to put a road through it. There's some people living there. Sounded instantly like somewhere I needed to go. We've got graduates, we've got people still at university. I've left the university a year ago. We've got craftspeople, we've got musicians, we've got artists. We've got a lot of very, very spiritual people here. And I'd be in this dry lecture, and then I'd dash out of the lecture, grab my rucksack, hitchhike down to Twyford Down, and arrive at the camp, and something would have happened that morning. If my house was burning down, I wouldn't write a letter and lobby my, lobby my government. I'd want to bloody do something about it. Jason Torrance was a member of a direct action group called Earth First. What they proposed was a permanent camp pitched directly in the line of the motorway. The camp's residents became known as the Dongas, after the Iron Age tracks that ran across the down. Well, how do you live like this? How do you really live like this and survive? Because we're actually cold and wet and this isn't a joke and we haven't actually got homes to go to anymore. This is it. There were moments where it was desperately grim, really dire. A lot of people got very ill from you know, very poor hygiene. We would just be hunched around this little burner pitifully, you know, this huge flapping tent, you know, the goat in one corner. And bad stomach upsets, that kind of thing. It was quite hard to keep yourselves clean. I bloody hated the whole camp thing. I hated being in a tent. I hated being cold. My remaining memory is being constantly cold and wet and damp. Some people might find this way of life rather strange, but the Dongas have already got the support of the Canon of Winchester and dozens of well-wishers from all over Hampshire. The Bishop of Winchester Cathedral and all the kind of Women's Institute stalwarts came up the hill and had a church service on a Sunday, had a Sunday service in our camp. And we're all singing Jerusalem, this green and pleasant land. We've got dreadlocks waving, there's like, you know, stout ladies in their tweed skirts and the bishop and, you know, we've got our face paints on and he's doing his God thing. And it's, it's essentially the Monty Python nature of the, the, the British psyche, really. <laughs> just indicates the anger that people express over what is being proposed. The devastation of this countryside is unacceptable. The first time I took direct action, some people said, right, there's some bulldozers, they're working right here, right now, come on everyone, you know, chop chop. And I just grabbed a tambourine and a drum or something and uh, ran down the hill with all the others and thought, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, and ran onto this work site. And just saw these incredibly brave people running out in front of these dumper trucks with wheels that were taller than me. And I just thought, I can't do this. So I kind of stood at the side drumming for a little while. But the next day, walked out in front of a bulldozer looked at the driver who just gave me a big smile and that was it. Stopped his uh, and turned off the engine, that was that. It was all very well standing in front of machines, but Earth First were proposing a far more dangerous form of direct action. All Jason Torrance needed was a volunteer. I suggested the plan, held up the, um, the D-lock and said, now, who is going to attach themselves to the machinery? total silence and I just said look I'll do it. Another demonstrator had used a bicycle lock around his neck and fixed himself to the axle. Now it's unfortunate that this kind of radical action has to be taken but I feel it's really necessary to save sites of special scientific interest. I'd just done an interview uh, on Sky News uh, everyone was moved away out of the system they turned the, turned the machinery on and 
just one word entered my head at that time, which was... The onlookers became enraged when the crane suddenly burst into life, with the demonstrator still shackled under the vehicle. They feared for his life. At that moment, it, you know, it really became apparent to me that you know, I was prepared to die for this cause. The police did insist that the vehicle was turned off, and they decided to try and find the key to that bicycle lock. So they started to undress the man, and luck upon luck, they found it on a chain around his neck. Some of the actions taken by the protesters were pretty extreme. I do remember one particular protester holding a very young child standing in front of this extremely large bulldozer, and it was an extremely dangerous thing to do. I just couldn't contemplate how he would do it. And that was really why the extreme actions had to be taken in terms of security measures on site to actually progress the work. After nine months of disruption, the government had had enough. They decided to take action themselves. It was about five, six in the morning. I was woken up suddenly by a guy saying, quick, 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 get out of bed now. There's a hundred guys in yellow jackets crawling all over the dongas. I think they're here to do some surveying. You can see this kind of like yellow shimmer. And it's like, what the f is that? It was, it was, it was a great army. They became known as Yellow Wednesday because they were all wearing yellow jackets. And these guys were just all over the place and they were circling the machines to bring in the machines. It was like the Romans are coming. It really was, the Romans are coming. Oh, my God, this is it, this is it. And then it all just went completely pear-shaped. It was just everyone doing their utmost to defend that land, you know, through passive resistance, through throwing ourselves in front of the machines, from climbing on top of the diggers, to lying in down in front of the security guards, anything we could think of, um, to try and slow down the pace of work. We were outnumbered like three to one, four to one, I don't know. Plus they were like three times our size, most of them. And, um, and, and it got very, very rough, very, very quickly. The security guards were almost going out of their way to hurt us as much as possible. They would grab you by your hair, I had long hair at the time, grab you by clumps of hair and just drag you over flints, through hawthorn, through brambles, you know, throw you onto metal, that kind of thing, just deliberate violence. The media-savvy dongas quickly alerted the press and by lunchtime, Yellow Wednesday was news. 50 private security guards and around 30 members of the so-called dongas tribe fought over land. I can't believe I'm in England. I mean, if you showed pictures like this from Romania or Russia, um, you say, all terrible, and you get head up. But, but those are John Major's bully boys. That's the only thing we can say. The camp was destroyed. Rebecca and Jason were banned from entering the site. But the following May, they returned to the down to protest again. By this time, the site looked completely different. The cutting for the motorway had been excavated, leaving white chalk exposed. Rebecca and Jason were soon arrested and ended up in court. One by one, we all stood up and made our statements. I don't think it made that much impression on the judge, and uh, he, uh, he said, you have been quick to snatch the martyr's crown. I think you'll find it uncomfortable headgear, and promptly sent us all to prison for 28 days. Um, I was staggered. I was absolutely staggered. All we did was dance on Twyford Down and take part in a peaceful demonstration, and we were sent to prison. The M3 through Twyford Down was eventually built, but it opened with little fanfare. I try and go there as little as possible. I'd certainly never drive through it, just on principle. I remember taking a, a train journey uh, once with, um, with Rebecca and it, it was almost like the first time we'd seen it and we couldn't really bear to look at it. It was a scar in the landscape and, and in us. Twyford 
Twyford Down had become national news, inspiring a wave of direct action. It seemed every major road scheme now had its own protest. The government's road building plans have infuriated and united the environmental movement. Homes, not roads! Homes, not... About a dozen people have been arrested during an operation to move anti-road protesters from a camp on the route of the Newbury mm. Bypass. A 250-year-old chestnut tree in East London, which had been standing in the way of a motorway extension, has been cut down. In the end, it took 200 policemen and 20 arrests. Environmental protest elsewhere blocked the road to stop a crane getting onto the site. As the morning progressed, the police have been struggling to evict nearly 300 protesters from houses in East London due to be demolished for a link road to the M11 motorway. Several demonstrators were arrested. The operation has cost more than £150,000. Swampy has been underground for more than 160 hours, the longest time a road protester has ever spent in a tunnel. I feel that it's the only way to get a voice these days. I mean, if I wrote a letter to my MP, would I have achieved all this? Would you lot be here now? After Twyford Down, things did change. I lived in liberal lefty Islington, um, so you didn't really want to say down the pub or at the dinner party, yes, I work for the road lobby, or I work in transport, or something like that. There's no doubt the road protests have had an influence, kind of turn people against motorway building. When Labour came to power in 1997, it was immediately apparent that the new government had no appetite for motorways. Public transport requires a greater priority. I demand, the public demands, that you provide a public service network that people can rely on and can afford. So within four years, we've gone from 600 road schemes down to 150 schemes and with an incoming government saying no more road building by anyone's standards, that's a very successful campaign. Rebecca Lush now works for the campaign group Transport 2000. This is my job, this is my life at the moment. Dr Alex Plows is now an academic specialising in environmental politics. I was young and angry and chaining myself to anything that moved. I am now campaigns director of Transport 2000, you know, one of those you know, professional experts. Jason's organisation, Transport 2000, agree with the government that charging us to use the motorway could be the way forward to reduce traffic. But when this was recently debated, there was a huge outcry. And Tony Blair ended up having to reply to over 1.7 million individuals that had protested. <laughs> 